This is the office of the future. It promotes collaboration. It can make you more productive. It can be put out with your household recycling. And using it can improve your health. Ollie and I started working together early last year on our final design honours project at Massey University here in Wellington. The project revolved around trying to smooth the transition between studying and getting employed. Specifically, we chose to focus on how design students transition into the creative industry. Now, for us, this wasn't the typical or traditional graphic design project. We struggled with the concept of a poster being able to ease this drastic transition, and we hated being bound by the limitations of a title. We decided to drop the graphic from graphic design and instead designed an experience. The experience is called Connection, and in essence, is about connecting local design studios and students to initiate relationships, provide insight, and instigate change in design education. The experience works by connecting one studio and one student for one week, where the student gets a desk in the heart of the studio environment. Now, whilst on this experience, the students do a combination of their own university work as well as engage in studio processes and activities. When we looked to trial connection, we were faced with a bit of a problem. We were meeting with a lot of local design studios, and the meetings would go the, the same way every time. Ah, oh, guys, I absolutely love this concept. This sounds fantastic. We'd love to be involved. However, unfortunately, we're actually at capacity at the moment, and we don't have any physical desk spaces available for your students. Now, at the first one of these meetings, Ollie and I took it pretty well. In fact, we even joked about trying our hand at designing furniture to solve the problem. <laughs> By the fifth or the sixth or maybe the seventh meeting, suddenly we weren't joking anymore. The whole project was in, was in danger of falling over due to a lack of desk spaces. So, as you've probably guessed by now, this is what we came up with. It is a flexible, foldable, portable, affordable, recyclable cardboard desk. Now, since this project, the desk has had quite a little bit of interest. People can see its usefulness beyond the initial problem it was designed to solve. One of the most exciting opportunities is its ability to enable new ways of working. Now, there is no doubt about it, the way we work is changing. We are more mobile and more connected than ever before. We have the ability to work almost anywhere at any time. Now, in contrast to this, the physical workplace has stayed relatively static, with many of us still working at isolated cubicles at the same desk and at the same computer every day. <coughs> New working environments are beginning to move away from these fixed, individual, and isolated workspaces and are beginning to see the merits of open, <coughs> fluid, and collaborative spaces. In fact, there's also a movement towards more healthier working environments, and people are beginning to stand while they work. Now, there are plenty of good reasons to stand while working. It promotes engagement and collaboration. It makes you more productive and task-focused. In fact, sitting has been getting such a hard time recently, <laughs> it has been called the new smoking. Now, since designing this desk, both Ollie and I have started using them in the office, and it has been nothing but positive. One of the key things you need to get right with your standing desk is its height. It needs to be comfortable and ergonomic to work at. When we originally looked at production of these desks, we first looked at die cutting, however quickly found that that was very restrictive and instead decided to go down the digital fabrication route. Now, for those of you that don't know what that means, let me quickly explain the difference. Let's imagine we're making cookies. 
We've rolled out the dough, and now we need to cut them out. We've got two options. The first, we could get a cookie cutter and stamp out a whole bunch, and they'll all be exactly the same. Now, the second option, we could take a knife, and we could cut unique shapes. Now, this may take a little longer. However, each cookie has the opportunity to be different. Digital fabrication is the second option. However, the knife is controlled by a computer, which is in turn controlled by you. So going back to the importance of the height of your standing desk, everyone is different, and one size definitely doesn't fit all. So choosing to produce these with digital fabrication allows us to change and adapt the designs to the user's needs. The potentials and possibilities with digital fabrication don't stop there. As the designs can be drastically changed, it means that we could apply them to multiple areas. One of the areas that we're fascinated in is disaster relief and mobile offices. Now, seemingly, these desks would be perfect to create a mobile office, and they would. But what other needs and problems could we solve in an area such as disaster relief? Could we adapt or change this design to create a hospital bed? Could we make more portable, user-friendly stretches? Now, there are multiple international products that have been of great inspiration to both Ollie and I, and one of our favorites is the Help Desk. The Help Desk was designed to improve working conditions for children in India. Now, this ingenious product led to better handwriting, healthier postures, and happier kids, all with a simple piece of recycled cardboard. Another great example is the Oru kayak. Now, this kayak is constructed from a single sheet of core flute plastic and folds beautifully away into a self-contained carry case. These are two seriously cool pieces of design and illustrate exactly what we want to do. We believe these products are great as they go against expectations. Someone, somewhere, was bold enough to try. They asked, why not? Why can't we design a kayak that folds away into a carry case? Why can't we improve working conditions for children in India? And why can't two so-called graphic designers design an experience and a cardboard desk? We believe the most exciting stuff happens when we don't fully know what we're doing. We believe inexperience is your greatest asset. It means you're free. It means you're naive. You don't know the rules, so you break them. Our challenge to you today is to go out there, go against preconceived expectations, take risks, as we think this is where true innovation lies. Thank you. Thank you.